Talk Sport. We're streaming live on YouTube and Facebook. You want to watch as you can, head over to the official Talk Sport channel on those platforms. And if you do that, you'll see this man who is loved in his own country of Uruguay and has been all over the place <laughs> managing, but is an absolute icon at Chelsea and Tottenham, where he was a player. Gus Poet is with us this lunch. <laughs> That's your camera, Mr. Poet. They're all watching you. They're all watching you. Uh, Gus, t- would you mind telling the listeners? What you enjoyed in the last few days. <laughs> Did I hear you say to yes. Edward Longshanks there, Scotland's win against Israel at Hamden? I said exactly, so that, that we don't change the words. It's the first time I enjoy a lot a goal scored by Scotland the Great. other day. The, For many reasons. One, because of the importance of the goal. Two, because of the fans being in there. It was special. And three, because of Clarkey. Obviously, I play with Steve Clark at Chelsea. Oh, of course. And you always have a fun. I think it's the first time I see Clark celebrating a goal that passionate, yeah. running yeah. down the line, which was nice. Do you know he's always quite reserved and yes. he's serious. Was it? Was he like that as a player when he was down it here? He was. He was. That was the surprise of him running, celebrating that goal the way he, yeah. he did celebrate it. So it was nice. I he was, enjoyed it. He was a good player, wasn't he, for Chelsea? He was a good player. Steady, very steady. You know what you get. You know when you say he will give you six, seven every game? Yeah, Maybe yeah. it won't give you a 10, but never a 2. Always 6, 7, bang. Steady, yeah. right back. It was very, We won the Cup Winners Cup with Clarky as a right back. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Gus, does it, I mean, here we are talking about you coming back to England, and I think, don't you, Simon, <laughs> uh, sooner than later, this man will be back working for a top club. Uh, he'll be back managing, maybe first team coach, but you will be working, Gus, with experience like that. How could you not be? But are you amazed as he and I are this morning? We're talking about Steve Bruce and Newcastle United taking training this morning and we're talking about who's taking over for him, from him when the Saudis are in now will it be Lucien Favre will it be Frank Lampard we'll get to that in a second who will it be but Bruce is taking training right now it's terrible I mean the feeling uh, we are all different okay I don't know how Steve will, will take it but it's, uh, it's a terrible feeling to go there this morning knowing that maybe by lunchtime he yeah. could be gone by tomorrow uh, morning he could be you gone you know what is the worst part you probably all your life you've been coaching and trying to have that chance of having 150 million to spend mm. and when you're that close maybe yeah. you go yeah yeah <laughs> because that's the dream of the manager we always ask for more yeah. more more and uh, he's and he's been waiting Gus to manage his 1000th game in the top flight which would be this Saturday against Tottenham uh, or Sunday I should say be, it would be terrible no? if something happened before he's that. on 999 no <sighs> leave it Leave it, uh, it's incredible. I hope he. So I, I, I don't think he's gonna be any sentiments, no. There. Yeah, but no. this is your industry, Gus. This is the end. This yeah. is the industry that this man worked in when he was a, the owner of a club. I mean, it's an industry like no other, isn't it? Yes, is. Uh, I think sometimes you get used, but it still hurt a lot when it happens. You know, I uh, I remember my first or second sucking, we can say. It was difficult for me. I, I hide for four or five days. It's like you don't want to go out for people to ask you, what did happen? Because first, you cannot say it. You cannot explain to everyone. And secondly, because it's like something bad. Then, mm. unfortunately, we get used to that part of the game. I, I don't want to throw this at you, but my recollection is that you found out you get sacked watching television. Is that I was, true? No, I was a BBC sport. We you, were negotiating. You, you, were on, you were on telly. Yes, we were negotiating the rupture of the contract with Brighton. I met the chairman, Tony Bloom, in the afternoon in London. Uh, I was doing a game in Manchester in BBC. I went there. I switched off my phone five minutes into the studio. We done 7.30 to 8 o'clock uh, pre-match commentate. And, uh, and when we went live with the game, that you relax because now you watch the game, the presenter told me, you know, it was somebody was telling him uh, he got sadness right now. <laughs> Good God! Uh, you found out I, when you were. I said it true as well. Uh, I was not expecting that, mm. but we were negotiating, so it was one of the possibilities yeah. of the negotiation. No, wow. but no at that time. Yeah, it was different. I, we yeah. didn't talk a half, a half time about the I mean, game. That doesn't feel right. I mean, I think the first person that should know about who's getting sacked is you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, that yeah. what they tried to say after yeah. that. I, I knew, but I didn't. I mean, yeah. 20 past seven, I finished the conversation with the lawyers mm-hmm. and keep negotiating. Yeah. Um, many people are asking this lunchtime, and you know it's coming. <laughs> your favourite club. You played at Chelsea, you played for Tottenham. Uh, but, but it's different. I'm, your I'm, heart? I'm no, I, it's not a problem. I think I, obviously, I enjoyed the, the lot. 
there is a big difference, and I hope people agree with me. When you win trophies, uh, I always say to my players, when you win, when you go up, it get the players and the club together closer. Yeah. Uh, so in, uh, I was lucky enough to win many trophies with Chelsea. Unfortunately, with the Spurs, only the one I was an assistant, but as a player, no. So it's yeah. uh, that's the that's the issue deciding. Sure. But nothing else. One or two questions coming in on Poch. Pochettino, of course, he's Argentinian, you're Uruguayan. But do you think at the time Tottenham were lo- wrong to dispense with Pochettino? Well, I go there with the reason. There is always a reason behind the, the decision. And and I think from outside the decision of Tottenham was uh, we want to win trophy now. So we're going to change Pochettino for Mourinho. I think it was that clear. Now the problem that a week before getting to the final, probably the first chance for Mourinho to win a trophy, it got sacked. It so sucked. The, the reason that he looked at in the beginning maybe was, I don't know. Yeah. It's difficult to know. You have to ask Daniel Levy. You think it was down to money, Simon, don't you? It was a money reason. I think it was likely to be triggering an event. If the Mourinho wins a tournament, it triggers something. And I think they'd had enough of Jose. I think after 18 months and the situation that was going on behind the scenes, I think they decided that was enough. And unfortunately, they got to a final at the same time. Yeah, but, but what I mean is the, the reason for yeah. hiding him is the reason that got him. Is got the reason that got exactly. him sacked. You're absolutely right. That's, yeah. exactly, that's exactly right. Exactly yeah. right. But it is such a strange industry. I, again, Gus, this morning we're talking about the possibility, the likelihood, or otherwise, that Frank Lampard, formerly of Chelsea, might end up in the northeast with with Newcastle, and yet he left Chelsea, and in came Tuchel, and Tuchel's turned it around magnificently there, and they look like they could be world beaters. How would you look in Frank's time at, at Chelsea? I think the first season was exceptional with the young players, without being able to sign players, I think it was great. Uh, then when the players are coming, the expensive ones, now the pressure is different. Now you need to deliver. Yeah. And uh, there is no, unfortunately, there is no Fran Lampard at Chelsea or there is no Teddy Sheringham and uh, Tottenham. Or the name is gone. Now you need to deliver. Unfortunately, that's sports. Mm. But Newcastle, I don't know. I mean, it could be anyone. Oh, uh, Absolutely. I yeah. mean, there is so many well, names. Conti, probably, though, probably not me. You know, after being a Sunderland, I got <laughs> very little or no chance to go to Newcastle. Ah, you never know. Uh, you can well, end up there. Nowadays. Yeah. One thing you keep saying, Gus, and, I, and I've listened to you very closely today, it, the pressure is about coping with the pressure. Yeah. Coping with the pressure. Is that what top level management is is about? You know the pressure's there and it's coming. It's like an unstoppable train. It's how you co- cope with it. I like pressure. I think I work better under pressure. But there is a moment, especially uh, the one fighting relegation, that uh, it takes years from you as a person. I mean, it's, it's tough. When you're fighting there at the bottom and the bottom and you know how much is in play for the club, for the people working at the club. You know, the everyday people in there that if you go down, maybe it affect up, I don't know, 30% of those people that need to go. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And you are responsible, directly responsible. Exactly. The main responsible. Is that when the job becomes a lonely place? Yeah, it becomes tough. I mean, it was tough. I mean, with any doubt, the, the toughest job I had in my life it was Sunderland. I got no doubt. And you love the fans, don't you? How but could you not? They're well, incredible. Listen, I got the first day. I got there, <laughs> second training session. I was going home. Somebody stopped the car put the window down and said to me, keep us up, I've been Newcastle. That's it. The rest, we don't care. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, a, you know, I said, and okay. it was definitely in that order. Keep in us that, up and beat Newcastle. So when I, when I got stuck, I, I kind of remember that guy saying, okay, uh, we stay up, we still in the premiership and we play Newcastle three, t- three times and we beat them three times. Wow. I can go home now. That is a different kind of... Uh, <laughs> but because of that guy in, in the traffic lights yeah. telling me the second day of uh, Sunderland. Yeah. Sunderland should not be where they are, should ah, they? Ah, no. Football is... Sunderland life. should be in the Premier League. I know no yeah. one's got a divine right, but it should be, Gus. It should, it should be. And I, uh, I swear to God, I try to tell them at the time, we need to change things. This is going bad, it's going bad and worse and it's not just a problem of Martin O'Neill or Paolo Di Cagno, Gaspoyer, David Moyes, uh, it's not a problem this is going down, we need to change before that too late now yeah. do you think Cavani is uh, with your fellow countryman, Uruguayan of course do you think he's a little bit unsettled with the arrival of Ronaldo no at doubt. United? no doubt, but I, I think it's 
it was unlucky as well because without Ronaldo, Cavani now was playing as a main mm. striker. Mm. Now that decision because of Juventus, Man City getting involved and blah, 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 mm. incredibly went against one person especially and that one is Cavani. Yeah. yeah I, maybe it should move in January. Maybe. It's not really? a bad idea. My opinion, from outside, I don't know him personally, his family situation or whatever, but if I was him seeing how things they are now and seeing him the other day in the national team that you know, it's, it's still not getting into the 90 minutes uh, yeah. game because he's not playing. Yeah. Mm, maybe. You Uruguayans are a proud lot. I know that. Would it have hurt you? Would it hurt him to give his number seven shirt to Ronaldo? I had a little situation, similar one. I'll tell you the story and I, I refused to, to give it. I, when I came to Chelsea, I, I wanted the number 11 because I was playing at Zaragoza with number 11. And number 11 was YC. I had no chance. It was non negotiable. <laughs> so uh, you check number eight. Okay, number eight. I go number eight. And then the, a year later, France won the World Cup 1998. And with number eight was Marcel Desailly in the national team. Desailly. And he came and Marcel asked me like 150,000 times for the number eight. And I say, you go no chance. This is not about money. This is about, it's mine. And I'm not giving it away until I leave this football club. Love no that. chance. So he never got it. Never got it. He tried. He tried. <laughs> I had to say, Marcel, try very hard. You're a brave man, Gus. <laughs> He's big, yeah. No, but he wasn't a fight. Marcel, Brilliant. Top, top man. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Thursday morning, 10 till 1. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.